Section 1. You will hear a conversation. The conversation is between two people, Gerard and Ben. Gerard has come to enrol himself in the Music Audio Video Library. You have some time to look at the questions 1 to 5. You will see that there is an example which has been done for you. The conversation relating to this will be played first. Hi, good morning. I've come here to get enrolled in your music audio video library. Yeah, sure, I'll guide you. First, you will have to fill the application form. Uh, do you want me to fill in the form right now? Yes, if you may, please. Not a problem. The application is just a formality. You have to just fill the basic information and your signature. Please guide me in filling up the form. Yes, of course. Tell me your name, uh, full name. Gerard Thomas Butler. G-E-R-A-D-T-H-O-M-A-S-B-U-T-L-E-R. T-H-O-M-E-S or T-H-O-M-A-S, Butler? Thomas Butler. It is G-E-R-A-D-T-H-O-M-A-S. B-U-T-L-E-R, correct? You got it, right. The full name of the person who has come for the inquiry is Gerard Thomas Butler. So, Gerard Thomas Butler is written as an answer for the example. Now listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. Hi, good morning. I've come here to get enrolled in your music audio video library. Yeah, sure. I'll guide you. First, you will have to fill the application form. Do you want me to fill in the form right now? Yes, if you may, please. Not a problem. The application is just a formality. You have to just fill the basic information and your signature. Uh, please guide me in filling up the form. Yes, of course. Uh, tell me your name, uh, full name. Gerard Thomas Butler. G-E-R-A-D-T-H-O-M-A-S-B-U-T-L-E-R. T-H-O-M-E-S or T-H-O-M-A-S-B-U-T-L-E-R? Thomas Butler. It is G-E-R-A-D-T-H-O-M-A-S-B-U-T-L-E-R, correct? You got it right. Now, the next is your address. Tell me your address. At 43 Vogel Street, Roslyn Parma Stone, North 4414. Did you say Roslyn Palmerston North? I I'll repeat it. 43 Vogel Street, Roslyn, R-O-S-L-Y-N, Palmerstone North 4414. 4414 is the postcode, correct? Yes, you got it right. We also need any number from your identity card. I have my driving licence. Oh, perfect. Give me the driving licence number. OK, hold on a minute. Is it in my backpack? Ah, oh, yes, it is. Here it is. The number is SH72079. Here, you can see it. OK, great. Now, tell me your date of birth and year. 25th of August, 1990. And can I have your phone number? Do you want my professional and personal numbers, both? Yes, we need both, your personal and professional phone numbers. My personal number is plus four four zero nine six five four. 3424 and my professional number is plus four four zero nine five eight four eight two nine eight. So we've done the basic and imperative part but I have a few more questions for you. Not a problem. Now look at questions 6 to 10. As the talk continues, answer questions 6 to 10. 
What kind of music do you like? Can I have a look at your brochure? Yes, please. Here it is. Actually, I'm interested in all kinds of music. It all depends on my mood, but I have an inclination towards dancing numbers. And sometimes I prefer soft music instead of hip hop. This is because my parents love soft, calm music. And at times I get melodramatic because the light music makes me carefree. Anything and everything, music is favourite to me. What else do you prefer? Um, I'm very fond of music shows. Some include new upcoming artists and some who are veterans in the field of music. Also, musical plays are fascinating. Recently, I got the opportunity to witness an outstanding musical show based on a comedy theme. That's great. So now all the formalities are done. You just have to sign. And last but not least, we did not discuss about the membership fee.、Uh, where, where do you want me to sign? Oh yes, here it is. This is the place where you have to sign. And about the fee, that will be thirty dollars, non-refundable. Ah, here is the fee. Now you are our member. When will I get my card? That will take almost three to four days.、Uh, I will give you a call as soon as it's ready, and you can come and collect it the next time you visit. Oh, can I borrow some of the music albums right now? Yes, of course, but you have to return them after every fifteen days. Okay, I'll have a look around and take a few of them. All yours. Enjoy. That is the end of section one. You now have some time to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two, you are going to hear a radio talk related to basic features of dolphins and their common behaviour. The talk will be beneficial for the people who love animals and birds. First, look at questions eleven to nineteen. Now listen to the recording and answer questions eleven to nineteen. Dolphins are cetacean mammals closely related to whales and porpoises. There are almost forty species of dolphins, seventeen in general. They vary in size from one point two meters and forty kilograms up to nine point five meters and ten tons. They are found worldwide, mostly in the shallower seas of the continental shelves. And are carnivores, eating mostly fish and squid. Some of the senses are either reduced or absent in cetaceans, or fail to function well in water. For example, it appears from their brain structure that toothed species are unable to smell. Baleen species, on the other hand, appear to have some related brain structures, but it is not known whether these are functional. It has been speculated that. As the blowholes evolved and migrated to the top of the head, the neural pathways serving sense of smell may have been nearly all sacrificed. Similarly, although at least some cetaceans have taste buds, the nerves serving these have degenerated or are rudimentary. The sense of touch has sometimes been described as weak too, but this view is probably mistaken. Trainers of captive dolphins and small whales often remark on their animals' responsiveness to being touched or rubbed, and both captive and free-ranging cetacean individuals of the species, particularly adults and calves, or members of the same subgroup, appear to make frequent contact. This contact may help to maintain order within a group, 
and stroking or touching are part of the courtship ritual in most species. The area around the blowhole is also particularly sensitive and captive animals often object strongly to being touched there. The family Delphinidae, the largest in the order of cetacean, evolved relatively recently, about 10 million years ago during the Miocene. A group of dolphins is called a skull or a pod. Male dolphins are called bulls. Female cows and young dolphins are called calves. Dolphins are often regarded as one of Earth's most intelligent animals, though it is hard to say just how intelligent, compared to many other species. However, dolphin behaviour has been studied extensively, both in captivity and in the wild. Now look at question 20. As the talk continues, answer question 20. Dolphins frequently leap above the water surface, this being done for various reasons. When travelling, jumping can save the dolphin's energy, as there is less friction while in the air. This type of travel is known as proposing. Other reasons include orientation, social displays, fighting, non-verbal communication. Dolphins show various types of playful behaviour, often including objects, self-made bubble rings, other dolphins or other animals. When playing with objects or small animals, common behaviour includes carrying the object or animal along to other members of the group or taking it from another member or throwing it out of the water. Dolphins have also been observed harassing animals in other ways, for example by dragging birds underwater without showing any intent to eat them. However, Playful behaviour that involves other animal species with active participation of the other animal can also be observed. Playful human interaction with dolphins being the most obvious example. However, playful interactions have been observed in the wild with a number of other species as well, such as humpback whales and dogs. That is the end of section 2. You now have some time to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. In this section, you will listen to a talk between an administrative staff and a female student. The student is a new student in the law department. She is taking some general information regarding academics. Look at questions 21 to 24. Listen to the conversation and answer questions 21 to 24. Good morning. May I come in? Yes, you may come in. Can you please guide me? Where is the law department office? I have been searching it all over for a while, but could not find the dean's office. Actually, you are in the correct building. I will give you the exact directions. Thank you so much. Are you a new student? Hmm... Yes, I am a new student, so I was hoping if somebody could guide me. Well, I am from Law Department. What do you want to know? Almost all the basic information about academics. What is the schedule of the lectures? Hmm, well, as you must be aware that law as a whole has many subjects under it. So all law subjects are taught three days a week, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday. And what are the timings? Tell me one thing, didn't you buy the brochure where you can find all kinds of information? I went to buy the brochure but reached late and the window was closed. Yes, it is not open all day. There are some timings. 
morning 10am to 12pm, and evening 4pm to 6pm. Oh, I was not aware of the time schedule. Never mind, the lectures start in the morning at 9am to 4pm. Lunch break is from 1pm to 2pm. The time schedule seems to be very hectic and my home is not near, so a lot of time will be wasted in travelling. Well, that you have to decide whether you want to travel on a long route. What about the attendance structure? Attendance is the foremost criteria. We expect not less than 80% attendance because our department maintains strict discipline for that. This is a strict rule. Is it mandatory? Oh, yes, we strictly follow this rule. Can you please tell me what will be the schedule for the other two days, Monday and Wednesday? Monday and Wednesday, each professor designs their own schedule, so the respective professor will inform you about that. OK, thank you. Now look at questions 25 to 30. As the talk continues, answer questions 25 to 30. So, something else you want to ask? Oh, yes please, do I have to do research work? Yes, you have to do the research work. Can you guide me what kind of research work is to be done? You will be given a particular topic related to your subject on which you have to give a presentation in your class. Only to my class, or to the other batches also? That depends on your subject's professor. And for how long do I have to speak? Almost for 15 to 20 minutes. That's okay. It's neither long nor short. And also you have to make a file on that topic and give it to your professor so that you can get marks for it. Oh, yes, marks are very important. You have the liberty to choose the topic on which you'll give the presentation, and the word limit is 2,000. Great. I already have a topic in my mind. You also have to give an exam. An exam? Yes, because your assessment will be based on that exam. Can you guide on what topic should I start preparing? You will be given the topics when you join the classes. Can I take books from the library? Yes, you may. Should I buy my subject books or library material would be sufficient for me? In my opinion, you should buy your subject books. What about the placements? We focus a lot on that part and we train our students in such a way that everybody is placed well in one or the other organisations. That's great, so I don't have to worry on that. Yes, we will do our best, but your efforts should also be 100%. Definitely. I hope you have got all the answers. Thank you so much. You have been very helpful. All the best. Thank you once again. That is the end of Section 3. You now have some time to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will hear an extract from a talk given by a media manager from the archaeology department. The talk is related to the history of Antarctica. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 35.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 35. Antarctica has no indigenous population and there is no evidence that it was seen by humans until the 19th century. However, belief in the existence of a Terra Australis, a vast continent in the far south of the globe to balance the northern lands of Europe, Asia and North Africa had existed since the times of Ptolemy, 1st century AD, who suggested the idea to preserve the symmetry of all known land masses in the world. Even in the late 17th century, after explorers had found that South America and Australia were not part of the fabled Antarctica, geographers believed that the continent was much larger than its actual size. Integral to the story of the origin of the name Antarctica is how it was not named Terra Australis. This name was given to Australia instead, and it was because of a mistake made by people who decided that a significant landmass would not be found further south of Australia. Explorer Matthew Finders, in particular, has been credited with popularizing the transfer of the name Terra Australis to Australia. He justified the titling of his book, A Voyage to Terra Australis, 1814, by writing in the introduction. There is no probability that any detached body of land or nearly equal extent will ever be found in a more southern latitude. The name Terra Australis will therefore remain descriptive of the geographical importance of this country and of its position on the globe. It has antiquity to recommend it and having no reference to either of the two claiming nations, it appears to be less objectionable than any other which could have been selected. Now look at questions 36 to 40. Now listen to the second half of the recording and answer questions 36 to 40. On the 22nd of January 1840, two days after the discovery of the coast west of Bellany Islands, some members of the crew of the 1837 to 1840 expedition of Jules de Mont d'Orville disembarked on the highest islet of a group of rocky islands about four kilometers from Cape Geodesy on the coast of a Delhi land where they took some mineral, algae and animal samples. In December 1839, as part of the United States Exploring Expedition of 1838 to 1842, conducted by the United States Navy, sometimes called the XX, or the Wilkie's Expedition, an expedition sailed from Sydney, Australia into the Antarctic Ocean as it was then known and reported the discovery of an Antarctic continent west of the Bellany Island on the 25th of January 1840. That part of Antarctica was later named Wilkes Land, a name it maintains to this day. Explorer James Clark Ross passed through what is now known as the Rosser Sea and discovered Ross Islands, both of which were named after him in 1841. He sailed along a huge wall of ice that was later named the Ross Ice Shelf. Mount Erebus and Mount Terror are named after two ships from his expedition. HMS Erebus and Terror, Mercator Cooper landed in East Antarctica on the 26th of January 1853. During the Nimrod expedition led by Ernest Shackleton in 1907, parties led by Edgeworth David became the first to climb Mount Erebus and reach the South Magnetic Pole. That is the end of section 4. Now you have some time to check your answers. That is the end.